Welcome to Explore With Kids. In this video, it's a follow on onto our video that we did about why we chose Crusader. You know, this video is about what options we chose, which ones we considered, and why we chose certain options. If you haven't seen that video on why we chose Crusader Caravans, I'll put a link in the video description below. If you have any questions or comments, hit us up below in that comment section and I'll do my best to answer any questions. And if you find this information uh, informative, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. So let's get on to this. So the first option we chose was the X Country Pack. Now, what does this actually get you? So I'll, I'll go through and I'll, I'll list, you know, what actually comes in this X Country Pack. So first one was a stone protector. So I guess the stone protector, it's great. You know, it prevents flicking up of stones, but we've currently got a stone stomper on our camper trailer um, and we'll basically get one for the van as well. We just love the stone stomper. You know, it keeps all the dust down uh, and just pushes it right under the vehicle. Uh, the next one was like a DO35 tow coupling. Now, this is a necessity, I feel. Like, you know, it's just so much easier to use and, and hitch up, in my opinion. Um, I haven't used the others, but, you know, the DO35 for me has just been brilliant. Like, it's a brilliant hitch. I guess even in the events of a rollover, you know, we've all seen accidents. Um, of caravans flipping over, um, but there's been times when we've seen vehicles with the DO35, like the vehicle stays upright and the caravan or trailer just flips over. So, you know, it's kind of like a safety feature in my eyes. The other things that comes with is recovery points in the rear, uh, extra uh, battery, box on the, battery box on the chassis, uh, 16 inch 265 mud tires and alloy wheels. You also get an extra 120 amp um, battery, 190 litre compressor fridge, You'll also covers the waste pipes for protection, uh, two tier electric step, uh, an additional 170 watt solar panel, 300 and, uh, 3,700 kilogram independent suspension with 12 inch brakes. You also get a toolbox with a generator and barbecue slides and two jerry can holders. Uh, you also get a gas regulator protector, uh, an A-frame E-tap protector. Uh, here's one 600 mil checker plate side, so it goes up further. You also get a six inch chass chassis rails instead of the four, uh, and gray cladding and checker plate wheel splats. Uh, and you'll also get a gray water tank with a washout valve. So overall the X-Country pack just makes the van more off-road ready. You know, we'll be looking at doing some semi-off-road stuff, so just felt this upgrade was necessary uh, and will be sufficient for how we intend to use the van. So now here comes the first upgrade was a third bunk. So having three kids, we needed that third bunk. Um, but I wanna let you know when opting for a third bunk, a couple of things will change with the van. The first is you'll lose the underbed storage uh, and outdoor access hatch. You know, the third bunk goes basically there in its place. With that third bunk, you now get an extra window. Because of this, you can't have a large awning that goes the full width of the van I guess as the windows get in the way of the sail track. Um, you know, and we really wanted a larger awning and the only way for us to, to get this, uh, meaning that we needed to flip the bunks to the other side, you know, so instead of the, the bunks being on the passenger side of the van, it now goes on the other side and the toilet, vice versa. So we just felt it was a waste not to have the awning right across that side of the van. Uh, another thing you'll lose is the TV hutch, uh, which is replaced by an external aerial bracket TV mount and PowerPoint. You know, we like the idea of that external TV hutch as it means you could leave things in there, such as, you know, maybe your phone. Uh, but the positive is that now everything is external. You can use that 240 volt outlet 
uh, without having the hutch slightly ajar or open. I guess in the end, we thought this was beneficial as because now we could charge the ute batteries in the ute. You know, if it's parked on that side of the van. And I guess in most caravan parks, that's normally the case. You know, there've been times when the sites have been small, our ute needed to be parked at the front. So this is why we decided to have another option, which was an external power point on the other side of the van near the power inlet. I guess that just avoids tripping over the, the cords, you know, when you're charging batteries in the ute. And eventually we'll probably put a, a canopy on the back. So it's just, yeah, it's just nice to be able to, you know, top that in if you're sitting at a caravan or, or not moving uh, from the caravan park for a couple of days. The other thing we also opted for was additional Sirocco fans in the bunks. You know, as standard, there are only two fans up front for the queen bed. And then another option was we went for the Dometic DRS. Now we plan on doing some dirt roads, you know, such as the Unandata track or, you know, even Birdsville, but wanted to make sure the van was kept dust free. Traveling with our camper, we know dust can get in everywhere. And the real only way is to minimize dust is via positive air pressure. Now, I'm not sure how good this Dometic DRS will be since um, you know, it still relies on the car moving to create that bit of positive air pressure, especially at low speeds. Um, but I guess the benefit is it now has a filter, say compared to that, I think it's got a scrupper hatch um, that is standard. Now, we've also heard that Carafan is another great option since it'll work at low speeds um, due to that built-in fan. But I guess we'll just see how it goes with the Dometic DRS. The other thing we upgraded was the air conditioner. So we went to an Ibis 4. Um, this was something we felt was necessary uh, than the standard of the IBS 3 was what they were putting in. I believe now it's the Broughton Bel Air. Um, I guess we liked the IBIS 4 due to its apparent ability to run off an inverter. You know, it's also low, lower profile and height, has a quieter fan. Uh, and I have heard it's pretty good at heating as well. So we'll see how that goes. Now it comes with the electronics. You know, I really wanted Red Arc BMS30 uh, with the Red Vision, only because I've used Red Arc gear in the past and found after sales and reliability with their products very good. It was only after we got a firm cost from Crusader to do this, we just thought, wow, that just is not worth the investment. So we went back to the projector BMS200, but in this time we upgraded to the BMS435 uh, with Bluetooth. So this gave us now an LCD screen and the ability to use our phone um, mobile app to turn lights or whatever is connected on and off. You know, another thing is we found out that the projected BMS does not include a DC-DC to charger to charge the van when driving. So then we added an Enerdrive DC-DC charger to allow that to happen. Now let's look at the antenna. Um, we actually upgraded the antenna and we chose a wine guard aerial. So you saw a lot of comments from people saying that the standard antenna was useless once you got out of the main suburban areas. You know, apparently the wine guard is designed in a way that has a better chance of receiving TV signal. So not sure how this is gonna work or how often we're actually gonna use the TV as we've never had that luxury before. But you know, we might just end up streaming to the TV instead if it's, you know, the antenna's not really working. We also decided to move the gas bayonet closer to the barbecue slide. Um, just because we thought it would be you know, closer and I guess hence require a shorter gas hose. And then we also chose to, uh, what is that, mount the batteries um, in the inside of the van as opposed to on the outside, you know, via this lockable uh, checker plate battery holders. You know, I wasn't really keen on this idea, so I got them to move it to the underneath of the bed. Apparently, it's going to be a requirement to have these batteries on the outside, but I just thought it'd be easy to, easier to steal, I guess, and I guess get damaged on the outside. Also, if we upgraded to lithium, didn't want those easily accessible. You know, there's a lot of money in those lithium batteries, but you know, they are coming down in price, uh, as I've shown in some other videos. So the other reason was it would be easy to add additional batteries for greater off-road camping. Um, and I meant, you know, basically I could go larger batteries and I wasn't confined to the size of the battery holders that were on the outside. You know, having the batteries under the bed means, you know, we will lose storage, but I felt that it was worth that sacrifice. We also decided to get provisional wiring of the inverter to underneath the bed and just ensure all power points are able to run off that inverter. You know, having the batteries and the inverter underneath the bed means the inverter would be, I guess, easier to install. We did look at Crusader doing this, but initially they wanted to install a projector inverter and when asked for Anadrive, it was just really expensive for them to do that. 
Uh, next thing was two-tone color cabinets. Uh, you know, they're not standard for Crusader and they only allow for the color of, of one uh, color throughout all the cabinets. Now we weren't a fan of that, so we decided to option this up and break up the color of the van. We also chose splashback uh, colors and our benchtop colors out of the standard range. You know, you basically have access to the entire range from their suppliers. You know, certain colors cost extra as they need to buy complete sheets. Um, I guess which are not used ever, anywhere else apart from your van. So I can understand that extra cost. We also found the only thing we could really change or we didn't have a choice of, should I say, was the vinyl flooring. I guess when investigating this further, there wasn't a lot of manufacturers out there having different color ranges and it seemed like they're all kind of getting it from the same manufacturer. So, you know, you're kind of stuck with colors there for, for your flooring. Now, what we wanted was a sliding door between the ensuite, say, kids' area and, say, the main living area with our, where our bed would be, um, was something that I thought was necessary to have some type of privacy, you know, when the kids are asleep, you know, and just if we're up, you know, if you're watching TV or you're reading a book, it's just kind of darker down that, that end, end of the van. Um, and we weren't really keen on, like, a concertina-style door, but, you know, we did want something solid that would hold in place. Uh, and, you know, funny enough, Crusader did allow this to happen. Like, and that's the beauty of Crusader is that you can pick and choose and, and change the van as you wanted. In the end, we did decide to delete this and we'll probably just add a curtain on a rod. I guess the only reason we removed these options was that it, they told us it was going to take 150 millimetres from the kitchen bench area, you know, which we thought, no, we want as much space in that kitchen area as possible. So. The next thing we did was we opted for a trailer mate jack, so, and the blue version. Now, you have the option of the red version as well, but we chose the blue due to its higher load rating. I guess it wasn't a lot more expensive than, say, the red. You know, we just thought that the, the jockey wheel, you know, that was there in place, there really wasn't a way we we're going to use the jockey wheel to move the caravan when it's parked. Um, you know, we also, currently we struggle with our camper trailer, let alone a, you know, two and a half ton van, so to speak. So. Because of this, it just seemed the trailer mate seemed easy to use in a traditional jockey wheel. Like you don't have to wind it and you know turn it around, you just jack it up like a normal car jack. But then the option to have swap out that plate with a wheel if desired, you know, means you kind of get the best of both worlds. The next thing was a solar Anderson plug. Now having free camped a lot and understanding that you generally don't camp in the full open sun. You know, we wanted a separate plug to be able to use, um, say our 200 watt solar blanket. You know, that's, it's movable. You know, we can chase the sun when we're free camping and you know, this would give us the option to make sure we're able to charge our battery. Moving on, next was the Dexter DSC. Now, we weren't sure if we needed this as the Ute has trailer sway control. You know, probably all heard of the horror stories, you know, where caravan shakes and then potentially rolls over. Pretty much we added this as a precaution. Um, I guess just like insurance, you, you have that as well. And I guess it's better to have it than not have it at all. So the reason we chose Dexter over Alco was Dexter didn't need an external plug connected to the car. Um, also, apparently it works better off-road, say compared to the Alco. So when going off-road, you know, it's recommended to disconnect it uh, with the Alco. But because with the Dexter, you don't require it and actually powers off the battery in the van, uh, you don't need that external plug. So that's the reason why we went with Dexter. The other thing was the black pack upgrade. Um, this was more of a cosmetic thing. You know, we just like the look of a black sink and tapware. That's just personal preference as to what we like. Um, I guess it wasn't necessary, um, but we'll see. Well, we're actually interested to see how well this is going to hold up um, over time, say compared to say the, I guess the chrome fittings. Another thing we also asked was to change uh, the van to Toyota stud pattern. Now, initially when we ordered our van, we were told that this was possible. It was only later on that we were told that we couldn't do it anymore because it was hard for the, the or Crusader to get specific hubs to match different vehicles and you know, it required the, v, the factory to hold all different kinds of stud patterns. So I kind of get that. Uh, the reason this would have been nice is that we could easily interchange the tires from the Caravan and the Ute, I guess in the event of a flat tire. You know, not, not a necessity, but it's still nice to have. You know, I'm still hoping that the stud patterns are at least going to line up. Uh, and finally, we added a four um, bumper to the rear instead of the two. This was added as we weren't exactly sure what we, you know, we're gonna carry in the future. But I guess it gives us the flexibility to hold more weight uh, on that arm, you know, such as a, a spare wheel jerry can for fuel or water. I guess, 
even potentially a, a firewood basket. But at this stage, I think it'll be used to carry um, a small kid's bike, you know, just strap it on the back. Now, now, now we'll look at the options that we looked at upgrading, but we actually didn't go ahead with. So the first was a, a pillow top mattress. Now that, that's something that's nice to have. Um, you know, we've heard the bed can maybe be quite hard or depending on how you like your bed, it's kind of like the Goldilocks scenario. Um, but we chose not to do this as we already had a, a mattress topper and a memory foam from our camper trailer. So we're just gonna move that across. Um, but if we didn't have that, we'd probably really consider going up to that pillow top because we like a softer bed. <laughs> uh, the next one was a tough one for us. So this was a slide out kitchen. So now having an outdoor kitchen, we thought it was a must. You know, at present we always cook outside with our camper trailer. Uh, and naturally we just felt that we needed it. But after really thinking about it, we'd use the barbecue more for our cooking uh, anyway. And it really was only the sink that would be missing. I guess we just didn't think we would go in, grab the stuff out of the fridge, you know, and then carry it all out outside to do cooking uh, on that stove. And then once you finish, carry everything back in, you know, or your cutlery and your cooking utensils. It just, we couldn't see ourselves doing that. And then since there was that external tap on the drawbar, we just thought we'd use that to wash our hands and do some quick wash ups. So I guess the extra weight, cost and loss of storage space uh, in that boot tunnel just wasn't worth the investment in our eyes. The next thing was a front window. Now we wanted to allow more light into the van. You know, obviously everyone loves light, we do too. But I guess after much discussion, we actually decided against this. Now we've heard horror stories of the front window hatch flying open and the, widi the window getting damaged. I guess or even creating another point for water to come into the van. Don't get me wrong, it would be nice to have to allow that more light, but we just thought we probably wouldn't use it as much since we actually move quite a bit. I guess time will tell if this will be something that we'll miss and we'll definitely let you know if we missed it. The next was a bike rack. So we looked at the option from Crusader and they actually built a frame on top of the drawbar over the toolboxes. You know, I just wasn't a fan of this. So I decided to look at uh, ISI EC bike rack holder. Um, since this was also transferable, say, to the ute. So when you're not using the van, you can just use this same bike rack and then chuck it on the back of, back of the ute through the, the tow bar fitting. So I haven't quite figured out how this will attach to the van, but I know, you know, there's been a couple of people that have managed to do this. So um, if you're out there, I'll be coming for your advice. So the next thing was lithium batteries. Now this is something that I, I really wanted to do. You know, the ability to have a greater depth of discharge and, and lighter weight, it's, it's definitely a must. Unfortunately, the cost to upgrade these from Crusader was extremely expensive to what I could purchase them myself. You know, I also wasn't sure how big I wanted to go, uh, as I'd like to do as much free camping as possible. You know, we just figured we could easily upgrade this at a later stage. Next thing was a diesel heater. Now, once again, this was a cost thing, um, you know, from the factory, like it was really expensive. Uh, it's also something we're not sure how often we would use. Uh, you know, and if we really needed it. Now, coming from a camper trailer, we actually got a diesel heater in ours, and there's only a handful of times we actually used that in the trailer. But I guess this is also something that I felt could be retrofitted later on. So disc brakes and air suspension uh, for leveling. Now, I wanted this without a doubt, you know, like I just 100% wanted it. Uh, and then when we were looking at Jayco, they wouldn't even entertain the idea of fitting, fitting this into there. So it was nice to see Crusader would actually allow you to do it. But in the end, the cost of those disc brakes and air, lev air leveling was, I think it was gonna be over, you know, it was like 10 to 15K from memory. Now, it's nice to have those disc brakes to stop, but I just couldn't justify it. I found out anyway that we could always get airbags fitted uh, later on to the van at a fraction of the cost. So for the moment, we're used to leveling via ramp. So we'll see how we go with that. And if it really annoys us, we'll go and get those airbags fitted. Another thing was an electric awning. Now, Crusader have this, the standard awning, or manual awning as you want to call it, um, from factory. And we just thought an electric awning would be a great idea. You know, you push a button, have the awning come out. Um, but after talking to the salespeople at Crusader and hearing other people's experience, I guess it was going to be more of a pain to have it uh, and save the extra two minutes in setup. So, you know, it wasn't really worth it, I guess. We also learned that the electric awning, you know, you, it can't be tied down during, you know, even the sliders of winds and you always needed to fold it back up. Uh, and another thing is that the arms, because they go out, you can't actually move them out of the way when it's open. So 
We don't know how true that is, but just looking at pictures, it is possible that these those brackets will get in the way of, of the um, thoroughfare underneath the awning. I guess the thought of the awning not working just because it was electric, you know, it seemed like another reason to go manual. As you can see, there are lots of options and just how flexible Crusader was in allowing you to customise the van to suit you or us as a family. Uh, another thing to make out with our decisions was, you know, things could be retrofitted and we weren't sure we needed it. We always kind of, you know, erred on that side of caution, like if it's wiring or stuff that's within the van, we'd definitely get it done prior. But it's always, you know, we, the decision came to thinking about, could we do it later? Can we not do it later? If we can do it later, we'll, we'll do it later. If we can't, let's just do it now and just save time. So anyway, that's it for this video. If it's been helpful, we'd love you to give us a thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when we release another video. You know, always checking out new sites and playing around with gear and equipment. If you have any questions or comments, hit us up in that comment sections below and I'll do my best to answer any questions. Until next time.